Hey everyone, welcome back to the second episode of Japan Business Time with、uh, Rochelle Karp and myself, Hiko Simon. And、uh, today, the second topic that we've picked up from your comments in the,、uh, from, from the first series that we did together is from Phil Moore Ha. And the topic is Gaijin versus Gaijin. So the first one is capitalized Gaijin, second one is lowercase Gaijin. I'm not sure so even, what, so even, even what that means, capital versus lowercase. Or, but yeah, this is, this is a really great topic. And、mm-hmm. I'm going to have to zip my mouth shut for this whole thing because this, this could be like a two hour video. So,、uh, yes, a lot to talk about. And、uh, we've had to hold ourselves back until now. So we're about to let it all out and explode with our Gaijin versus Gaijin <laughs> story. So hang around. Okay, so Gaijin versus Gaijin.、Um, I'm going to hold my tongue for a minute. So, so how, how do you interpret the, the comment for a start? Well, yeah, when, when I looked at the comment, I, what I assumed he was referring to was being someone who obviously looks foreign, say someone who's blonde haired and blue eyes, versus someone who perhaps is,、um, has an Asian background, is either,、yeah. from, is either from another part of Asia、yeah. or is from the US or Australia, but their heritage is Asian. And so they're not Japanese, but if you just look at them, people might assume that they're Japanese. Which is the all caps and which is the lowercase? I don't know. I'm, I'm <laughs> guessing that the blonde, blonde blue all is all caps. Okay, yeah, yeah, that was my like, assumption. Which, yeah, that yeah. was my assumption, yes. Okay, which kind of, I, I can see the logic of that.、So、right,、okay. I, and then you can also have like sort of in between, because I've had it happen to me several times since I'm not very tall and I have black hair,、yeah. of a Japanese person walks up to me from behind and says, Excuse me, do you know the way to whatever? Or do you have a tissue? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I turn around and they're like, <gasps> And then I speak to them in Japanese and then they're really confused. Yeah, so yeah. you can have that kind of thing too. But. So I, I read it differently. I read it as Gaijin fighting, which is like my entire life. So I, I, let's take your angle on it first, because、okay. your angle is super interesting as well. The,、right. the, the, the standing out Gaijins versus the, you could say, more invisible or the more melded in for Gaijins. Right, right. Yes. So from your angle, from, from, from the, the, the different treatment, which clearly happens between、mm-hmm. people who maybe can pass or at least can, can blend in、right. naturally better than those who can't.、Um, And we're talking about this, I guess, in a, in a business context, in right, a work、exactly. context.、Um, there's no question. There is differential, there is differential treatment. I,、yes. I, when, I, when I joined my first job in Japan, 90 co hires,、um, and the only two gaijin or pe- for, people that equated to foreigners were me, and I had hair at the time, and it was blonde hair, and I, was bl- and I continued to be blue eyed. And my other friend was a Kikoku Shijo, was,、mm-hmm. was an American born. Actually, he was a Nisei.、Uh-huh. Um, so he was an American, but, but Japanese blood. And we both had the same level of Japanese ability、uh-huh. and training and everything, but of course we got treated completely differently. Right. So, how is that in your experience? What is your.、Um- oh, I definitely think that's the case. I definitely think that's the case that Japanese society does tend to put people kind of in pigeonholes based on their appearance. And have certain expectations. And what are those expectations? Well, I, I think the expectation is, is if you look Japanese, you should be acting Japanese. And if you look Japanese, you should probably be speaking Japanese too. I know that when I worked、yeah. in a Japanese company, one of my、um, co workers was a Japanese American woman、yeah. who spoke some Japanese. She had never studied in school, but she'd lived in Japan for a long time and picked it up.、Yeah. And、um, at one point, the, and we were very good friends.、Yeah. And at one point, one of the senior people in our department said to her, Well, you two should just talk in Japanese together so that you learn Japanese from Rochelle. And she's like, well, why would we do that? We know we're both Americans, we're going to talk to each other in English.、Yeah. And he's like, well, you know, you ought to speak Japanese. It's in your blood. <laughs> you know, which is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awkward. Yes, it was very awkward. And it was just weird because we were really good friends and it was just created this yeah, yeah. issue you know, that we didn't expect. But. Okay.、Uh, there is definitely, and you know what I mean? There is the case of the Kikokushiji on the people's Japanese ancestry where there's no question. In fact, my, my, my Nikkei friend put it to me the same way that、um, when people realize that sometimes he'd be, talking, he'd be talking Japanese with a Japanese person, and at some point he'll say something that's not quite right or it's got a bit of a strange pronunciation.、Uh-huh. And he said, you know, and, you know, then all of a sudden they just look at you like you're retarded. <laughs> they don't know what to make of you. Is there something, right, right. Is there something wrong with you? Or there's, you know, the,、um, There is also the, the very prominent and increasingly prominent、uh, number of、uh, Chinese who live in Japan、right. now and who work inside Japanese companies. 
and no Japanese blood to speak of. No, but at the same time, um, let's let's say I I talk about my 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 white guilt uh, a lot, <laughs> uh, white privilege that exists, and the fact that Japanese seem to extend it. The fact is that I can have you know I can barely hold a pair of chopsticks and say nothing more than konnichiwa, and they'll say welcome, Mr. CEO. And you can have Mr. Chinese person who has, you know, slaved and studied and been to Japanese university who's worked 10 times harder than me and is, you know, serving coffee and put in the bottom rung of the company and treated yeah. with absolutely no leeway whatsoever. Right. When doesn't materially... Get, doesn't get that slack that, that, that Caucasians well, not even get. Slack. Frankly, Caucasians don't even get slack. They get, you know, the An extra boost they, too, yeah. The, you know, the people are overly nice sometimes yeah. in, in, in some very Japanese co companies. Right, right. And yet at the same time, you know, the Chinese and Koreans and the, the, the near Asian people are expected to be almost like the same as a Kikoku Shijo. Not, not exactly the same, but, close, oh, you close. can be Chinese, you're Asian, you know. There is this kind of, I think, belief by a lot of Japanese that somehow Asian languages, somehow the Chinese characters and Japanese language in itself is some sort of genetically imprinted, you know, some, it's some sort of thing that, uh, that Caucasians, right. there's some sort of magic or some sort of genius that we must have to be able to decode their, their language. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that they somehow give us more respect for doing even in a, in a less competent way than Asian people who I guess they, they say, well, they must be able to learn it. Right. Yeah, I know. It doesn't really make sense, does it? Well, I guess and what it comes down to is that there's a lot of ignorance and a lot of empathy towards what it is to be a foreigner in the first place. I mean, this is, I think, what pervades everywhere. Mm -hmm. the, the, all my time working in Japanese companies, the, the number of times and situations that, um, for example, I was told, I remember when I, when I had my first job and... They wouldn't. I was told that I'd be paid my, my moving uh, the cost of moving some stuff from from uh, where it was stored in Australia to Japan. Mm -hmm. I could just get you know, a crate or whatever okay, I could ship. Yeah. And after I got here, I came here just with a backpack and nothing else. And I, I said, so okay, I can expense just to send uh, one one box over. And they said, yeah, we thought about it, but you know, we decided we looked at it and we decided that we don't allow this for other Japanese people, and so we don't want to discriminate about against the Japanese people by allowing you to do it. I was like, that's a, okay, okay. Well, this gets into this whole issue of like Japanese companies and their their idea of what fairness is, which doesn't well, always make sense. But it's but, it, but it's based in, 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 in an inability to empathize with the with the position of the foreign person. Right. Um, it's the same with things like uh, the Hoshonin, the whole Hoshonin drama, which every foreigner you know coming to Japan and they want the company to be the Hoshonin for their apartment, uh -huh. and they say, well, we're never Hoshonin for anybody, and it would be unfair against everybody else if we did it for you. Oh, but then who else are you going to ask? Where am I right? supposed to live? What yeah. am I, I'm I'm here for the purpose of working. Working for, for you, you. <laughs> right? But they can never come into your shoes, and there's almost yeah, this thing like where, yeah. where, what I love about Japanese culture, on, on so many ways, is the how Japanese spend so much effort on putting themselves in the shoes of other people to be considerate towards other people. But it's like when that person is a foreigner, it's like that 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 obligation that they have in every other aspect of their lives mm. to put themselves in the shoes of the other person. It's like oh, they're released from that obligation. Mm. You're you're from welcome from Mars. Right, I right. don't. I couldn't possibly comprehend anything. The lack of imagination in a lot of cases, I think. Yeah, and it's improving, but it hasn't improved as much as some other things that we're probably going to talk about in the series have mm -hmm. progressed. It's still right. something that when, you, when you're in a really Japanese company, yes, you're dealing with people who, and it's kind of funny, they, and it's, almost, it's, it's weird, it's based on it, uh, they will not understand, well, they won't understand generally the situations that, a for, that foreigners have with the apartments right. and, with, mm -hmm. and with language ability, right. but also they'll be much less for, forgiving and much less tolerant of Asian people and Nikkei people, and somehow fawningly, fawningly forgiving sometimes of Caucasians as well. There's one other, sorry, I can go for everyone on this. There's one other point, which is as a Caucasian, you do, you will go through a transformation that, 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 that Chinese will not go through. Chinese are expected from the beginning, you know, get up to speed or leave, or, you know, get up, what, you can't speak Japanese now fluently, you know, why do we hire you? With foreigners, it'll be like, um, oh, you know, here's John, and he can he can say hello in Japanese, everybody listen. But the thing is, once you get past that kind of, you know, stupid uh, phase, and, and you actually start learning, you start becoming quasi-competent in Japanese, mm -hmm. the expectation switches at some point. There's a switch that happens where oh, you, it becomes the same as with the Chinese. Mm -hmm. It gets once, okay, so... John understands, you know, everything that I'm saying. He should understand everything I'm saying. So why did you miss? Why 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 did you do that typing mistake? Well, this ah, doesn't make sense. Right. And that switches all of a sudden. All of a sudden, it's like where everybody was like forgiving. Of, it was like happy. You could say konnichiwa. All of a sudden, it's like why? What's wrong with you? Why they're can't annoyed you that you're not perfect, right? Yes. And this is well, that's another whole discussion. But the uh, but yeah. So the, the, it is interesting. There is definitely different treatment of different foreigners. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we won't talk about Gaijin's fighting Gaijin's. That's my whole life anyway. You can watch my channel every week to hear about Gaijin's fighting with That's what Victor and I do all the time we, with our microaggressions. Um, but okay, so that was, a, that was a great topic by uh, Phil, 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 Phil Morha. Phil Morha. Yes. So thank you, Gaijin versus Gaijin, man. We could, we, there are so many different angles. I like your angle, which isn't the one that occurred mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, hang around. We're going to do more of these topics from that you chose. Yes. Uh, and so come back same time next week. Yeah. Rochelle Cobb answering all your questions yes. about uh, Japanese business time. Right. Peace.